thank you so much for joining me here. I'm really bursting with excitement. Probably more excited than you are to be here. Thanks so much. I feel really blessed. And there's loads of us that couldn't get seats. So please, a round of applause and a big hello to everyone else. People are sharing on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm Lerato. I am Nigerian, by the way. There's a lot of questions about where I'm from. I'm one of you. So I'm happy to be back home sharing wonderful food. Food is my passion. I've been doing it as a business. I contribute to The Guardian Nigeria. And I, I, I share my recipes with the BBC in England. And I'm really happy to be here with everyone to share my food philosophy, which is simply sharing the best of African produce and Nigerian produce. I think we're really lucky. When you live in Africa or in Nigeria and you have the chance to pluck a mango, it's like, oh, what's the big deal? It's just a mango. But if you're in England, you can't, when you go to the supermarket or the farmer's market to get a mango, half the time you go back home and it has no taste. You can't return it because, you know, you've bought it. But in Africa, we have, we're really blessed. We're blessed with natural resources I think we take for granted. So that's my mission. I celebrate this. And in the UK, in the West, they love it. So I think we should celebrate it. How many of us here can say chocolate is African food? Do you, you do realize that it's an, it's an actual African produce. 60% of cocoa is grown, you know, we share it. So there's Nigeria, there's Ivory Coast, there's Ghana. But the West is taking all of it. Fair enough. But I think we have so many different spices. We have Moringa which is now a superfood in the West, I think we should take it back. That's what I'm trying to do and it's working. So I think as a home cook, as an entrepreneur, if you have a catering business, celebrate what you have access to down here and the world will absorb it. That's what I think we should do. That's what I'm doing and that's what I'm sharing with you guys. So let's get cooking. Yeah. <laughs> now today I'm gonna to be making some of my favorite recipes. I love fish, but a lot of us in Nigeria, for example, we love frying fish. Fried food is great. It's great because it's unhealthy. But, you know, we're all trying to like keep slim and be healthy. So my idea is for us to steam fish more often. And some of us, even if you don't fry fish, we go and buy that fish on the roadside. It tastes, it's really, you know, it tastes really nice. We don't know what they put in it, lots of chili. But this recipe is going to encourage you to cook fish at home in a very wonderful, elegant way. You can serve it elegantly with these leaves. Does anyone know what we call these leaves in your local dialect? Moi moi, no, moi moi is what you cook it with. What? What's the actual name of it? What Sorry? It? Can we get a mic? E yes. <laughs> what is it, please? Ewe, we call it Ewe. Ewe. Ewe, what language is that? Yoruba. 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 What about Igbo? In Igbo, anybody in Igbo? <laughs> eh? What about the lady in the yellow up there? In Yoruba, we call this Ewe Iron. Ewe Iron. <laughs> what about Igbo? We've got Thank two you. Yoruba. Any Igbo people here? <laughs> Yes? What is it in Igbo, please? Everything all right? Akukwa Eteri. Akukwa Eteri. That's not Igbo. Is that Igbo? Is it, it's Igbo. That's Igbo? Yes. Somebody else has a name for us. Akukwa Eteri. Akukwa Eteri. Any other language? Because Yoruba, Igbo, and Hausa, they just take over. The Ebira language, call it Avia Papa. What language is that? Ebira. Kogi State. Where is Ebira? Kogi State? Ah, uh, that's wonderful. I've learned something today. So we've all learned something. Okay, in Calabar, they call Nkong. Ah, what about Kwaibam? My father's a Kwaibam, actually. What? It's the same thing. Okay, all right. So thanks for that. I've learned something today. Yeah, so we're going to be steaming our fish in this. Um, it's popularly used for moi moi. We know that this is what makes the moi moi delicious. It steams it. It imparts its own flavors into the moi moi. It makes it super duper healthy. In the West, I can't always find this, so I bake my moi moi, but this is like, I think I'm gonna pack the rest of this in my suitcase when I'm going back. <laughs> so we're gonna steam our fish in this with some wonderful spices. We've got, and these are some of my favorites. We've got um, calabash nutmeg, which I believe we call ehu. Ehu, ehu, what Igbo people call it, ehu. <laughs> ehu, Cal ehu, calabash nutmeg, uh, which Igbo's call ehu, and then uda which is selim pepper or you know, grains of selim, uda pods. These are typical ingredients that we find in pepper soup spices. But why do we always just grind all the pepper soup spices and use it only for pepper soup? I think we can use it for meat. It can be a dry rub for meat. It can be a dry rub for fish. You can use it to roast vegetables. We don't always have to use spices in the way that we're used to. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah, so we can switch things up. Sometimes you make a mistake. Sometimes you try something, it doesn't work out. You try again. That's how I learn, basically. So we're going to start with our fish. And here I've got red snapper, which is very meaty. 
Um, it's a very meaty fish, so it won't break too easily. You can use any fish you like. I think in, in the north, they have a fish called Giwan Rua. It's very white, and it sort of tastes like chicken. So any fish that you find that's your favorite fish, croaker, cod, um, yeah, use that. So my favorite here, when I was doing research for it, is the red snapper, so it's going to be delicious. So we're going to start with our leaves, and then we're going to double it. I think when we're doing moe moe, we always double it because you don't want the liquid to seep out. So same thing here. We're not putting water in the fish, but as it steams, it's going to have lots of liquid in it. So we're going to um, wrap the fish, and I'll show you the first one, and then we're going to have some people come and help us wrap. Anyone up for that? Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to start with the fish. And of course, our fish is filleted, so there's no bones. And another thing, you can actually do this whole. If you have a small, reasonably sized small fish, you can do this whole, but obviously the cooking time will take longer. So now let's put, we're going to have our, this fish is going to be seasoned with, let's add a pinch of salt. So I've got four pieces of fillets here. So this would be enough for two greedy people, or maybe one person. So salt, and then we put our uda pods. Now you've got to be careful. These spices are very pungent. And if you use too much, it can be very bitter. So just about a pinch of uda spices, already crushed. And then we have our calabash nutmeg. Now nutmeg is very dangerous if you use too much of it. So we just need a little bit. It sends you to sleep. One second. <laughs> Help me with my mic. So, Chef Sorry Lerato, about that. just really These quickly. technical things happen, don't they? Chef Lerato, yeah. really quickly, do you want me to get two people or will you pick? Where are you? I'm over uh, here. I'm a bit short. Well, so pick, pick two people. All right, okay. Pick um, two I people. I would like a lady. Two people who are not going to ruin my food. Right there. <laughs> and a gentleman. I do believe I saw Beyonce in here. Big Brother Beyonce, are you still here? And so oh, I'm putting okay, no a pinch of I'm putting a pinch of black pepper. So in there we have salt, the uda spice. I'm gonna write the recipe and share it with everyone. The uda, um, the selen pepper, salt, a bit of black pepper. Really simple because the sauce that's going with the fish is gonna be quite spicy. So we don't need the, the fish to be too spicy. So season the fish. We drizzle it with olive oil. You can use vegetable oil or um, sesame oil. Um, sorry, sunflower oil if you like. Olive oil can be quite expensive, but it is the healthiest. But, you know, a lot of people think olive oil is the only thing you should use. I don't, who fries? Some people fry plantain with olive oil. I think it's a sin, so stop it <laughs> if you do that. So, yeah, so we season the fish. And they're just turning around the oil a bit. And the oil is just for moisture. Remember, we're not frying this. And then we start to layer. Now, listen carefully, because whoever's going to come help has to repeat this. Pro I'm not going to repeat it to you. And then we start layering with our vegetables. And the first vegetable that we're putting in with our steamed fish is efforteta. You guys call it locally, which is spinach. Did I pronounce it properly? Efforteta. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so the efforteta, and don't laugh at me. In my house, I'm always, I'm a fast cooker. So I don't like having to bring out a chopping board to chop everything. Please buy shears. They're very, very easy. And you don't have to do the washing up. So, you know, don't judge me that I'm not chopping my efforteta. <laughs> So chop that in. So we have a reasonable amount there per, per leaf. And I have doubled the leaves so that we can wrap it up easily. And then we season the efforteta. Now I've got, where's the crayfish? I've got crayfish. My husband calls it crazy fish. So when I'm cooking, you know, I don't know how many of you are married or cooking for men, fathers, brothers. When I'm cooking for my husband and I put crayfish in the food, he says, oh, honey, it's delicious. But when he sees me putting crayfish, he says, I don't want that crazy fish, honey. Uh, so, you know, you can, if your husband doesn't like any ingredient, just hide it and then they'll never know. So crazy fish in there, about a sprinkle, salt, and red pepper. We know Africans, we love our chili. So, so season your spinach and then we put the fish. So one fillet, so you can see that size, it's quite small, a little bit thick. Put that on top of the spinach. Everything's going to cook, I assure you. Can you get me at the pot steaming? Hot water? So put that on top, and then we're going to have some tomatoes put on top. We're just going to cut them. And I believe you can use whatever sort of, can I have a knife, please? You can use whatever sort of veg that you enjoy. 
But tomatoes are wonderful steam. So we're just going to cut the tomatoes simply. And I've used plums here because they don't have a really, really um, huge water content. We don't want lots of water in there. So cut them in thick rounds. And then just place them on top. I don't know if you, you guys, can you see this on the screen? It looks pretty already. And then season the onions as well with a bit of, with the same spices, a bit of salt, a bit of the uda. A little bit of the calabash nutmeg. And then now we're gonna wrap, yeah? So break the stem, the bottom of the stem. For those of us that cook more and more, you know what to do. You break the bottom so you can roll it properly. So snap the bottom a bit and then roll it to the side. Both sides covered, bottom on top. Roll the top, roll the, the top sides again, and then cover this. And then that's that, we're good to go. Did everyone see that? Did they show that on the screen? Yeah? So, did he show that on the screen? Well, we're gonna do it again. Now, we need our volunteers to help. All right, Who's I've coming? got Funke and Nkem right here for can you. I, have, I need Please, the can pots. you put your hands together for Funke and Kem as they go up to help out Chef Lorato? Yeah. Come on now, guys. Put your hands together. And the steamer going here? Yeah. Chef Lorato, no, behind, you, behind you, you have your two oh, helpers. Hello. What is your Hi. name? Funke. Funke, what is your name? Okay. okay, can you wash your hands, please? Yeah? Okay, right here. I'll help you here. Wash your hands here. Chef Lorato, I've got people asking, what exactly are you making? Because you didn't give a title to your oh, meal. Oh, sorry. It's called aromatic steamed fish. Aromatic steamed fish yeah. for anybody who would like to know. And it's aromatic because of the spices we're using. So it's typical spices that we're familiar with with pepper soup, like I said earlier. And it'll smell really nice. And the spice, pepper soup spices are not, um, they're not ordinary spices like maybe a simple pepper. They do make us feel better. They make you relax if you're feeling really ill and you have pepper soup. Why, why do you think it's something that they recommend for pregnant women? Because it really makes them relax. It's very cleansing. So it's one of the healthiest things that you can, you can eat. So I think putting it in a dish like this fish is fantastic. So are you going to help me? <laughs> so need water. Put it on really high. Lots of water. All right, let's wrap. So we need another board for you. It's going to be a bit of competition. Can I get another chopping board? Okay. So that's yours. Do you cook? Do you both cook? Yeah, so you've got yours and then you've got yours. Do you remember everything I said? <laughs> There's going to be a prize. I'm not sure what the prize is yet, but <laughs> there is going to be a prize. Yeah, so. You put the you put your spinach first. I'm not supposed to be doing it for you now. Come on. You put your spinach first. And then you season your spinach with a bit of the calabash nutmeg, the uda, the crayfish. I hope everyone's catching that. Salt, pepper. And then the fish. Yeah. And then you next. <laughs> the uda. A bit of salt. Calabash nutmeg. <laughs> You're really very chefy about it, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, and then the fish. And then I'll let you chop your tomatoes. Can you have that there? I'll let you chop your tomatoes. You see how I did it in the round circles and then you layer it up. Yeah, so chop your tomatoes. If we had to work together on a normal day, you guys would lose me money. <laughs> it needs to be quick. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So you could just layer it up. So layer yours and then, I'll, yeah, I'll chop yours for you. Sorry? As much as you want it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, so layer yours. Season it a little more. Obviously, you don't want too much in the uh, piling up so you can cover it properly and it will steam properly. Okay. 
Yeah, a bit of salt. I think yours is, yours is nice enough. All right, so now wrap. That's the, the actual competition is the wrapping. Yeah, so you've got to break, you've got to break the stem, both stems first. Yeah. And then wrap. Left, right. No, left. One to the left, one to the right. We need more water. I'm going to do one, and I bet I'm going to finish before you guys. Chef Lorato. <laughs> yeah. Chef Lorato, is there a possibility you could move some of the leaves to the side? Because um, oh, our ones? viewers can't see what exactly is going on. Thank you very much. Oh, how are they doing? <laughs> doing yeah, great. that looks good. Then you turn it around and put, leave it flat. Yeah, perfect. She's done well. I wonder why women are always the best cooks. <laughs> so I'm doing the fourth one now. And then some, some more tomatoes on there. And then of course, if you really like spicy food, by all means, put more chili on it. It's, you know, I, I always tell people, don't follow recipes strictly. Recipes are a guide, they're supposed to help you, but don't act like a prisoner to the recipe. If there's something that you like more of, add it to the recipe. If there's something that you don't like, take it out of the recipe. But there, I've met a lot of people who can't cook if you don't give them an exact recipe. But I, think, I think we need to like snap out of that. So we've got that, a bit of olive oil on there. And then we wrap. If you're making this at home, 20 minutes top, dinner will be ready. And now we put them, we have a steaming pot here. If you don't have any of these steaming colanders, you can just wrap the pot, put, put a little bit of water and the moi moi leaves at the bottom of your pot. Not too much water, because you don't want it to soak into this. And just pile them up in there. Wrap them properly and put them on the, the wrap side down. Oh, thanks so much. A round of applause for our helpers. These guys. Thank you to Funke <laughs> Thank and you. Kem. All right, Chef Lorato, would you like to take some questions now? Yes, fire away. All right, anybody who's got any questions for Chef Lorato, please. I need more water in the okay. steaming pot. I want to know how many minutes will it take for the fish to be ready? What's your name? Her Is name's Favor, and she's asking how many minutes will it take for the fish to be done? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. So before, before you put the fish in, sorry I didn't mention, make sure you have like a pot of boiling water. So it's already steaming and then you pop the fish in there. 20 minutes it should be fine. Depending on the thickness of your fish. You saw the fish that I was using was really quite, wasn't that thick and it was, cu it was cut already. If you're using a whole fish, leave about 20 minutes to half an hour. I keep checking it to see if it's done. But the thicker your fish, the longer it'll take. But it's not, it doesn't take that long to cook. Hello, Chef. Um, yeah, for the you? Sea, oh. um, for the fish, yeah? for lover of spicy food, really do you get to add onions or garlic? You can if you want to. The reason why I haven't done that here is because I'm making a sauce, a mango sauce, and it has all that. So because I'm making something that's more punchy, I've left the fish really simple. So that's like create, creating a balance in your menu. So if you're not having a really, really spicy sauce, you can add onions and garlic into that dish as well. All right, one more question. Yeah? Hello, Chef. What yeah. about if for somebody that has allergy to those spices you're adding? For example, not, some people are allergic to nutmeg. Then you just don't use nutmeg. You can use something more aromatic, like you can, you can use a, a sort of herb mix, a mix of parsley, coriander instead. I do know some people are allergic to nutmeg, so leave it out. I've never heard anyone really allergic to um, uda. Do you know, are people allergic to uda? I don't know. People have all sorts of allergies. So if you have an allergy, leave it out. But find alternative spices. Even curry powder will be nice in this dish. You don't like curry powder. <laughs> all right, we have one more. Um, hi, Chef. Yeah. Where are they? Oh, my oh hi. Yeah. <laughs> nice recipe anyway. But I'm nearly concerned about the leaves. Yes. For those of us that we don't have access to this leaf regularly. Yes. So I want to know how do we preserve it? You can put it in the freezer. Just like But you that. know we have nepa. 
<laughs> you can put it in the freezer or just you can put it in the freezer. I've heard of some people leaving it outside, but the sun also dries it up. So you can leave it outside and sort of sprinkle water on it every, regularly, but you will still have that problem of res preservation. So as with any fruit and vegetable you have, try to buy it closer to when you need it. But if you have good NEPA, <laughs> I'm not calling out NEPA, if you have good electricity, put it in the freezer. When you need it, bring it out and soak it in warm water and just dry it with a napkin. Yes? Is that okay? <laughs> All right, we have two more questions and then we will be I'm moving do the red on. Now. Hi, Chair. Yeah. Well, basically, I'm, I'm on the leaf. Why are you using the back of the leaf, not the inside of the leaf? What do you mean the back? You're using the back of the leaf, not the oh, inside. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> okay. Okay. But it's still fine. It's still fine. What if we don't have leaves? That's my question. You could, you can use, where, where is the person asking? Is it Leave. you? If you don't have leaves, use foil. Oh, foil, foil, foil is fine. Foil okay. is fine. Wrap the foil up. Um, sort of seal it, seal it like an envelope on all sides. Some people tend to leave it out for the steam. I think it's unnecessary. So seal it completely and then put it in the pot or put question. it in the oven. Let me ask the question. Fine. Okay. Are you guys good there? Hello. Yes, hello. Yeah. How do you do debone the fish? Sorry? How do you debone the fish? The fish. How do you describe deboning a fish? <laughs> you chop that. Filleting a fish is very, it's very technical, but you also have to be really careful. So you chop the head off and you try to slice it. There's a lot of measurement and accuracy in terms of knowing your ingredients. You've got to know, you've got to be able to calculate where the center of the fish is. And you start cutting it from just before the, just above where the fish, you know, the, the fish, the, the, the back of the, the, the bone, the, sorry, the bone structure lays out. Cut it out. And it's also good to have a tweezer because you're also going to have a little bit of um, fish left, a lot of bones left in. So the tweezer will help you pluck a lot of it out. So when you cut the head off, try to, Fillet it off in the middle. If you have any bones left, use a tweezer. I know a tweezer is very cosmetic. It's for women and makeup, but it helps in cooking as well. Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to the questions in a few more minutes. So, Batalu, more water. Chef Lorato. Yeah. yeah, so another thing, and I call it skinny effort, just because it's sort of similar to what's gone in the fish, but this is what I do all the time. It's really, really popular in my, on my menu in the UK. It's just braised vegetables. I'm not cooking it for 20 minutes like we do all the time in our Nigerian recipes. I think it's unnecessary. Um, a lot of us are probably used to that sort of soft texture. We want it to, like my mom once, she was like, oh, it's not done. It's not done. I was like, mom, we need to get used to having our vegetables just a little bit crunchier because what that crunch does, it reminds us that it still hasn't lost all that freshness. We absolutely need it. There's no point eating a four that you've cooked for 30 minutes and then you tell yourself, oh, I'm so healthy. It's, you're deceiving yourself. So I call it skinny F4 because it has practically almost no oil in there. I'm not too sure I believe that red oil is bad for your health. I'm not a nutritionist, but I just, uh, our great grandparents have been eating it for so long and they live the longest, so I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you to stop eating red oil. I personally reduce it. I just use olive oil or sunflower oil, peanut oil in some things. It has a flavor, so you've got to be careful. Um, so, you know, use your discretion. It's just very easy. You chop this up with some onions, some peppers, braise it for less than five minutes, and it's done. If you think it's not done, then don't eat it. So we're just going to chop this up really roughly. Like I said, I can't be bothered to chop with a knife. And I like them quite large. So if you like your greens quite fine, you can cut it larger. I like it. I like it chunky. It's personal preference. And do you guys find these often, these red, red spinach? It's really pretty. I'm just going to chop the, this up uh, roughly. And then I have a pot here that's heated. Can you turn this up, please? I have a pot there that's heated. And I'm just going to braise this lightly. So I've chopped this up. I'm going to chop about half an onion in there. So this, this recipe that I'm making is about a portion for four people four to six people, depending on how much you eat or how much you don't eat. So chop the onions roughly. Yeah, put it back on. Not oh, low, put it low. And then this is going to go with our fish dish when it's ready. It's going to go right on top. And then we just sort of saute our onions. The slower you cook onions, the more delicious it'll be. 
and on low heat so it doesn't burn. The mango. Yeah. We have a, uh, I yeah. don't know if it's, three people on your, um, your stage, Lorato. Yes. And I think they're waiting for you to give them the go ahead to start oh. eating. <laughs> Yeah. So I hope everyone tries this. I mean, even if it's not exactly to your taste, my whole point is just I really, really enjoy finding lots of different things to use our spices for, things that are not traditional. Even if some, my mom's typical Nigerian and she would be like, you can't, you're not supposed to do it like that. And then I ignore her and I try and then she tastes it and she's like, oh, it was amazing. I'm like, well, I disobeyed you, but you just got to try something, you just got to try. You make a mistake, if it doesn't work, you try again. And that's, that's all about cooking, you learn as you go on. Some over on this side, please. Yeah. Remember, there's yeah. another masterclass yeah, after this. So if you want to come back to that mangoes. masterclass with Chef Aaron, Mango you can do that now. by registering outside to come back in. All right, I think we have one more question. Thank you so much. Tuck in, tuck in. Hey, Chef Aaron. Hello. Hello. I want to ask about the poached tangerine. Yes. Do you get to use any other citrus fruits apart from that? Yes. Maybe like lime or lemon for those who want to saw. I think that, would you like to try it? poached lime? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that might be a bit like sharp. Sir. You could, but it, if you can take it. Okay. So a similar citrus will be oranges. Okay. Yes, oranges tangerines, clementines of that citrus family, but lime and lemon, I've never seen anyone just chuck like a whole lemon in their mouth. Can you do that? <laughs> but of course, you can squeeze lime into the poaching liquid, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna speak to the people eating here and just to yeah, find out. give to the crowd. All right, so what are you having right now? Well, I'm having the fish with the beautiful sauce. I love it. It's really well blended together. Very subtle and sweet. I like that word, sweet. Okay, so, nice yeah. one, nice Mango. one. What about you? Um, well, the same thing. The fish is amazingly cooked. And um, the red, is it the spinach? I've never tasted anything like it. It's absolutely amazing. And what about you, young lady? I love the fish because it's nice to You know there's about well 500 done. people here. If I sit down and serve 500 people, we're all going to sleep here. <laughs> I like it. The spinach is also very nice, and the tomato gives it a very nice flavor. Oh, look Aww. at that. She's talking like a true chef. Yeah, do you oh, usually you eat vegetables? Ten. She is 10. Wow. Do you, do you usually eat vegetables? You like vegetables? Good girl. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, anything else, Chef Lorato? Well, I just hope everyone tries these recipes. To me, I think they're really easy. Especially this one, I think this is really pretty. You can sort of garnish it with a bit of the lemongrass, serve it to anyone, they'll love it, it's refreshing. I think we should start getting used to eating healthier and enjoying a lot of the things that we have and not necessarily cooking in the same way all the time. It'll really impress people. It impresses people in other countries, so we should, I think from Africa to the rest of the world, we should really own our food like it's something special. Like Moringa, for example, many of us, uh, especially in the north, they eat moringa as an everyday food. In the west, you can buy it in a health shop. It's a health food. So I think wherever we are, whatever businesses you're doing, if you're a home cook or you're in a catering or you sell produce, really own it and appreciate that what we have is really special. That's what I'm doing and it's working for me amazingly. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, Chef Lorato.